situation. He took a pinch in the back. He got beaten for crying out loud. We used heart attack. Me. Managers on a major league baseball team don't make decisions. Could have done without that. The credibility in this situation is worse than losing your job. Was it over with the Germans bomb pro armor? The castration of the major league baseball managers. We know it. Ask me about my win. A lot of people call the weekend after Thanksgiving rivalry weekend as obviously as it pertains to college football. And you look at what I believe are still two of the greatest rivalries in all sport. Michigan against Ohio State, which Michigan, pending the results of the game today, lead the all-time series 60 and 60 to 51 with six ties. And then the Iron Bowl. Alabama against Auburn, obviously more of a big deal in SEC land and down south, but um, universally, as far as within this country, is still one of the greatest rivalries in all of sport. Alabama owning the edge pending results of today's game, 49-37 to 1. So what I was thinking about, and I'm, I'm thinking about championships, and it, it's been kind of on my mind as I'm thinking about whether it's World Series, Super Bowl, you know, NBA, NHL. There's a lot of greats that have existed in the world of sport that have not won a championship. And you could talk about the best players to ever play to not have a championship, but also the best coaches to coach to not win a championship. And you think a lot that one kind of is synonymous with the other. You know, to be a great coach, to be a great player, you also need to win. You know, that's why you think of the likes of the Tom Brady's and the Joe DiMaggio's and, you know, those that not only were great at the sport that they played, but also won. You know, Michael Jordan is thought of in a different light than he, than he would be had he just been a great player. Six-time NBA champion, and that certainly stands to the belief where a lot of people get behind him and say he's one of the greatest players in all of sports history, the greatest basketball player to ever play, yada, yada, yada. Because I do think that championships and dominance within a sport, there is a little bit of synonymousness with it. And I think of some of the greatest players to have never won a championship. And I think of Ty Cobb and I think of Ted Williams, who really were two of the greatest hitters to ever exist. Another great hitter, Tony Gwynn, who I think to this day is so grossly underappreciated as far as how great of a hitter he was. Why? Because... Wow, he didn't walk a lot. He didn't hit a ton of home runs. That's all the game of baseball gives a shit about right now. And that's walks and home runs. But Tony Gwynn didn't care about walking. He didn't care about hitting home runs. But still maintained himself as one of the greatest hitters to ever live. So I think of others that have not won a championship. That were still considered greats in a sport. And I think of a coach two-star combination that played for the Utah Jazz in the NBA for many years. And that's, of course, Carl Malone and John Stockton and their coach, Jerry Sloan. The dominance that they had within the sport, the three of them, two players and a coach, uh, don't really get shared in a lot of other sports because of the point that I made before, dominance within a sport is so contingent on winning a championship. It's so contingent on great players, great coaches, in order to do that, you also need to win championships. And what the Utah Jazz were able to do for so many years, in spite of not winning, may not be done again. And I think of three players within the NBA, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, who are teammates right now, Chris Paul, who went to the Golden State Warriors in search of that championship. You're talking about three of the greatest players to play in the NBA and not win a championship. And when it comes to the NBA, the only other player outside of Malone and Stockton that I could think of that was that dominant and didn't have a championship to go on with it is Charles Barkley. And you see Charles Barkley now many times in the Subway commercials, his work that he does, which I think is very good on the TNT network. But Charles Barkley, as dominant of a player as he was, just missed out on those Philadelphia 76ers championship teams of the early 80s. Never got himself back to that stage. But, you know, I, th I think of so many others as far as players. And like I said, Ted Williams, Ty Cobb, they kind of seem to be in a, a level of their own because I think they were amongst the greatest players to ever play in their respective sport. And Ty Cobb got the three straight World Series. 
in in two thousand um, and nine, Ted Williams got there in nineteen forty six, but they never won a World Series championship. And I think of so many other dominant players that did even just one time, and that keeps them from being on this list. But I think of Randy Moss, who had the 2007 Super Bowl with the New England Patriots. They lost to the Giants. That was his one chance. As dominant of a receiver as Randy Moss was, never won a Super Bowl championship. Jerome McGinlaw, 20, was it 25 years he played in the NHL, never won himself a Stanley Cup. Warren Moon, uh, one of the best quarterbacks. I think one of the quarterbacks that I don't think is much credit as he deserves, certainly Helped me become a football fan. Never won a Super Bowl. Marcel Dion, dominant player in a time where a lot of players that played with him won championships, won Stanley Cups. Marcel Dion did not. Tracy McGrady, Fran Tarkington, Ernie Banks, Ken Griffey Jr., Dan Marino. And then the two that are up on a pedestal by themselves, Barry Bonds and Barry Sanders. What say you? Name me a player, throw it up on a comment feed on the Passball Show podcast. Let me know who you think was the greatest player to ever play a particular sport that never won a championship. I think of coaches, I think of Marv Levy, four Super Bowls. You know, I think of Bud Grant, you know, multiple times to the Super Bowl. Uh, Gene Mock, you talk about his, his opportunities he had. Obviously, with the Phillies in 1964, that team broke down, never got there with the Montreal Expos, but had a chance in the ALCS with the California Angels in 1982 and 1986, 20-something seasons as a head coach. Uh, obviously, the Bills team, the guys that were on Marv Levy's team, Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, Bruce Smith, and, and, of, and of course, the, the great Andre Reid. None of them got to win a Super Bowl in spite of getting to four in a row. I got. I feel like I got an exciting edition of today's Saving Sports History segment. And after that, we'll just drop the podcast and we'll go back to be with you some other time. Today is the 25th day of November, 2023. So everything that I'm going to talk about in the history of professional sports happened on this day, November the 25th. We're going to start out with the year of 1952. And we're going to talk about the Dallas Texans. And the first thing that's going to come to your mind is Dallas Texans, the precursor to the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the National Football League version of the Dallas Texans, which played only one season in 1952. And on November 25th, won its only game. They went 1-11 that season. They only won one game. And that game came on this day in sports history. Now, what stands out about the NFL, Dallas Texans, because I would bet about 98, 99% of you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. They had one of the great coaches, a Hall of Fame coach, coached the 1952 Dallas Texans. And that's Jimmy Fallon, a longtime college football coach, Hall of Famer, was inducted in 1973. Coached for Missouri and Purdue and Washington, St. Mary's in California towards the end of his career. But he also coached the Los Angeles Dons, a member of the All-American Football Conference between the years. I think it was a couple of years out of the four-year existence. The league existed from 1946 to 1949. Jimmy Fallon coached the Los Angeles Dons for two years. Also, the New York Yankees of the NFL the year before he coached the Dallas Texans. 1961, Bob Cousy, one of the greats to ever play in the history of professional basketball, became the second player in the history of the National Basketball Association to amass 15,000 points. The first was Dolph Shays. Next, Bob Cousy. Obviously, you're talking about LeBron James potentially being the first player to get to 40,000 points. The first to get to 15,000, the second to get to 15,000, Bob Cousy and Dolph Shays being the first. 1979, one of the great days in football history because of nothing that happened on the field. It was the first broadcast of the legendary Pat Summerall and John Madden tandem. And I grew up, like a lot of other people grew up, getting a chance on a given Sunday listening and watching 
two of the greats to ever get behind the mic and I think one of the best combinations together to listen, to watch a game called by Summerall and Madden was a treat for a football fan and I was happy to be able to do that in the 80s and the 90s, 1979 today, November the 25th, first time the two of them in a booth together calling a game. 1980, just a year later, Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, the fight that will be known forever as the No Mas fight, a match, hard hitting fight between two of the great staver go up against each other. Eighth round victory by Sugar Ray Leonard when Roberto Duran says, No Mas, No Mas. One year later, Raleigh Fingers becomes the first relief pitcher to win the league MVP. Now, three years later, would happen again. Bruce Souter, I believe, did it a year later in 1982. But in 1984, Willie Hernandez, who he just lost, respects Willie Hernandez, may he rest in peace, won the MVP and the Cy Young. Not on this day, though. So staying to this day, Raleigh Fingers, first ever relief pitcher to win the MVP on this day in 1981. In 19 Eddie Shore was born. Eddie Shore, Hockey Hall of Famer, longtime Boston Bruins player, two-time Stanley Cup winner, four-time Hart winner. And that means something. How many four-time MVPs do we get to talk to over the course of a day? Eddie Shore, born on this day in 1902. Jolton Joe DiMaggio, who if you look around my room, if I do a panoramic view of all the pictures of stuff I got hanging up in my room, there's a picture of Joe DiMaggio probably during his 1941 hitting streak of 56 games. Joe DiMaggio, born on his day in 1914, he would be 109 if he was still alive today. Another picture hanging up in this room, great Lenny Moore one of the more underrated running backs to ever play in the National Football League. He was born on this day, 1933. Happy birthday, Lenny Moore. Um, he just turned, what, 90 today, right? 90, 90th birthday for Lenny Moore, one of the great running backs. Penn State uh, played under Joe Paterno, you know, was a great running back for the Colts in the 1950s. Lenny Moore, born on this day, 1933. Head football coach Joe Gibbs, Super Bowl champion, what, three times with the Washington Redskins? Of course, we're allowed to call them the Redskins because that's what they were when Joe Gibbs was the head football coach. His birthday today, he turned, what, 90, 80, 83 today. He was born in 1940. Chris Carter, all he does is catch touchdowns. One of the best receivers that we've seen in recent memory. Obviously, the Receiver quarterback stats have been a little overinflated over the past 10, 15, 20 years. But, you know, Chris Carter during his time was one of the top receivers in the game. Took the H out of his name because he wanted to emulate Chris Collinsworth. Pretty freaking cool. Um, we lost on this day in the year of 1944. Former Commissioner Kennesaw Mountain Landis of Major League Baseball. And you've heard my opinion about Kennesaw Mountain Landis. Uh, when it comes to racism, I believe Kennesaw Mountain Landis was at the forefront of it. He prevented black players from playing on the same field as white players. In fact, basically made the statement, said that black players were going to play in his league as commissioner over his dead body. And that process of having a black player play in the same field as a white player, something that didn't happen for well over 60 years, did not happen and was not on its way to happening until this day when Kennesaw Mountain Landis finally died. Now, I'm not going to, I'm not along the belief that you should take people out of the Hall of Fame for their beliefs, for what they did to hold society back. But there is a hypocrisy involved in baseball. And you need to hear this out. Kennesaw Mountain Landis is always going to be a Hall of Famer, regardless of what he did to hold back the progress of social justice in the game, in the world of professional sports, which at that time and for many years, and still in the minds of some, baseball is considered the national pastime. We have a Baseball Hall of Fame that has chosen to completely neglect an entire era of, play, of baseball 
based off of what players were putting in their own bodies. There's one of the greatest hitters to ever play in Major League Baseball was hit well over 300 in a World Series that was not on a level and was considered to be part of it. And Joe Jackson is not in Baseball's Hall of Fame. It's all-time hits leader. Regardless of your belief of sports gambling, which now the sports basically sit there and take a back seat to when you're able to bet within games. Players have certain amount of rights when it comes to sports gambling right now, but Pete Rose is held out of its Baseball Hall of Fame. My point is, is that you can't have it both ways. You can't have a Hall of Fame marred by one of the all-time racists in the history of sports and still hold back so many different players and be picky and choosy over who should be in a Hall of Fame and who shouldn't be in a Hall of Fame. Barry Bonds should be in a Hall of Fame. Roger Clemens should be in a Hall of Fame. Amongst many others, mainly Rafael Palmeiro, Manny Ramirez, Sammy Sosa. In a sport that says it's all about character. You can't be all about character if you're one of your first Hall of Famers, the most prominent commissioner that you have in your Hall of Fame is a racist. It's a hypocrisy. Please look into that, Major League Baseball. So talking about somebody that shouldn't be in a Hall of Fame is, I'm going to accept, is in a Hall of Fame because a Hall of Famer is a Hall of Famer. I don't believe you could take Hall of Famers out. All, three years ago, we lost one of the greats in the world of sports, and that is Diego Mardona one of the best, most talented, most dominant soccer players to ever play in this world, had 91 caps, 1986 World Cup champion, FIFA player of the year of the 20th century, Diego Mardona, may he rest in peace died on this day just two years ago. This is the Passball Show brought to you by JohnPLA.com by St. Aloysius Church in Jackson, New Jersey by Two Ways, One Passion Food Truck located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. If you're inter interested at all in hearing me yap, flap my yap mouth, you can check me out on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, videos on YouTube. We'll be back with you soon. God bless you. And as always, I'll see you on the other side. Chris Clyde was on the Chicago Cubs roster opening day. I have many leather-bound books. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. Why don't you give it all or a majority of it to the team that wins the freaking World Series? I was going to listen to that, but then I just carried on living my life. I may come out as the biggest Major League Baseball manager apologist. That will only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. Because hitters are going out there saying, I'm either going to hit a home run or I'm going to strike out. And if I don't get a pitch that I feel like I have to drive out of the park. I ain't supposed to be here today. Especially you prospect whores and hoarders are going to be a little pissed off at me when I say this. I'm a dude who plays a dude disguised as another dude. There are only two managers in baseball's Hall of Fame who have losing records. One of them is the iconic Tony Mack, who you could say, in spite of winning five World Series championships as a manager, could be in as much as a pioneer. <laughs> And what side of the spectrum they're on? Were they pitching? Were they batting? If your favorite team was pitching and a ball got inside to hit a batter, there's no way it could have been on purpose. But if, if you were a fan of the team that was batting and a ball got inside and hit somebody or went behind somebody's head, absolutely 100%, unequivocally, that pitcher was throwing at. Well, they put their tail between their legs, decided they're going to do exactly what they're told. You damn well right better give him a contract extension. You damn well right better make him the manager over the next series of years. 35 years ago, I could have loaned your parents the money for an abortion. <laughs>